some criticism for the Bengals offense ahead of Sunday night's matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. Hi again, everyone, and welcome into Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com here outside of Paycor Stadium, as you could see, where the Bengals continue to prepare for an AFC North primetime matchup in Baltimore against the Ravens. It's a huge game. But you don't need me to tell you that. First place in the AFC North on the line. I think it's fair to say these two teams are considered the favorites in the AFC North, whether you want to look at my bookie, more on that later, promo code Bengals Talk, or you want to uh, you know, just consider the, the consensus and just the feeling looking at these rosters. And the Bengals' offense hasn't gotten off to the start that everybody wanted. They haven't done... Uh, the things that, you know, I certainly expected. In the past couple of weeks, it's looked better. 27 points in their first win of the season over the Jets. 27 points against the Dolphins, averaging 22.8 points on the season. That's good for 13th in the NFL, which to me, it's a bit shocking that it is that high because 22.8 points is not a lot. That That's on the low end. And when you have a Jamar Chase, when you have a Joe Mixon, and obviously Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Hayden Hurst, it's a lot of weapons. It's a lot of talent, and starting off slow is certainly not something that you were anticipating for this offense. It certainly happened. It looks like they're turning a corner, but former NFL quarterback Chris Sims had some interesting comments that have made the rounds, and I wanted to react to them, and if you haven't seen them, let's play a quick clip because he, let's say, has been frustrated by the Bengals' lack of creativity on offense. They can't find the rhythm of how they want to attack or the plays they want. To, they're having a hard time adjusting to how they're being played. And then now let's go to this group of plays. It's a disservice to the talent they have on the football team, whether that's Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. They're not given the same advantages that some of the other good receivers or quarterbacks in football get. You're doing nothing to even make the Dolphins think or have to change anything. I mean, nothing. Everybody just runs straight or everybody just run the slant route is not going to get it done. Everybody just line up where we come out of the huddle against a defense that's very intricate and detailed is not going to get it done. I don't care if you have four Jamar Chases out there. Look, some are going to say that and be critical of the coaching staff and the play calling and the designs and things like that. Others are going to say, yeah, well, Burrow's uh, appendix and all of these things in the offseason or they've turned a corner and honestly, it's somewhere in the middle. The, the truth is somewhere in the middle where I, I think that uh, the players are still finding themselves a bit. The coaches are still getting a read for things, and, and they're adjusting. Look, Jamar Chase is adjusting to life being double teamed, which Chris Sims mentioned. And he's not double teamed all the time, but double teamed. And so are they going to have to find more creative ways to get him the ball? Yeah, that's not a take. Joe Burrow said that this week on Colin Cowherd's podcast, that they need to be more creative in finding ways to get Jamar Chase the ball. So I understand that. I also understand the people that say, yeah, is it because of lack of creativity that they failed? You know, the, the pitch to Joe Mixon, for example, on fourth and one. If Lyle Collins does his job and seals the edge, then that's a first down. And instead it was bad play call, and, and I said it. I was like, ah, I don't love the decision to go for it because you have a guy named Evan McPherson uh, who's money, which we know. So I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. I'm not going to crush the Bengals coaching staff. I also think that there's plenty that they can do to get the most and maximize, get the most out of this offense, maximize this offense. So no doubt, I think some criticism is warranted. At the same time, you flip it, and some of it just hasn't gone their way. Some of it is players aren't executing the way uh, that they should have. Some of it is Joe Burrow did not start the season the way you were anticipating him to. And really struggled week one. And struggled again week two. Uh, by his standards, struggled week two. And is starting to snap out of that. And that's one of the reasons why, if you look at this Bengals team, if you think they're going to beat the Ravens, you'd say, ah, this is, this is why. It's because Burrow is going to, to play at a really, really high level and play the best he's played all year. We'll get to our prediction on Friday. But the point is, I get what Chris Sims is saying. I understand it. Was it a little over the top with the, I'm frustrated and upset and bothered? Yeah, you know. Of, of course, a little over the top. Guess what? That's, that's part of the business. At the same time, I think that there's no denying that the Bengals have to be more creative in how they find ways to get the ball to number one. They have to find ways uh, to get their playmakers in space. And so that's going to be the key. That's going to be the key to this offense reaching that 
next level, reaching that next step that I expect, that you expect, that everyone expects. And so absolutely find ways to get Jamar Chase in space. Absolutely find ways to get the ball to T. Higgins more so. And, and that's the other thing is Chris Sims was critical of the Bengals' lack of answers. And it was not just the Steelers game, not just the Cowboys game. He talked about all four games, including the Miami Dolphins Thursday night game. And so, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I think that the Bengals last year, they would look at a defense and they would figure it out. And guess what? They would still be able to find the big plays. And they're starting to do that. And they certainly did that against Miami. It took them a little bit. And so that needs to continue. And so when the bar is high, there are going to be people that rip you when you're not playing at that level. Let's be honest here, and and I'll say this right. The Ravens are going into this game averaging 29.8 points per game. The Bengals, 22.3. There's no way in any world, in any realm, where the Ravens offense, including with Lamar, who I think is awesome, should average more points than the Bengals offense. Look at their playmakers. Look at that offense. Look at versus the Bengals offense. Shouldn't be close. And if it is close, the Bengals should still have the edge. And instead, uh, they're scoring about a touchdown less per game. We're going to have more on this matchup. And by the way, if you want to wager on Sunday night football here um, between the Bengals and the Ravens at M&T Bank Stadium, we're going to be there, by the way. You know what you do? You go to mybookie.ag. And you take advantage of their double deposit bonus that just for watching this channel, you get to take advantage of. All you got to do is use promo code Bengals Talk, and you're going to get a double deposit bonus. You want to start with a $500 deposit, use promo code Bengals Talk, and they're going to match it. You want to start with just a $100 deposit, they'll match it. $50, they'll match it. All you have to do is use promo code Bengals Talk. You sign up today. You can wager on the Bengals versus the Ravens. Bengals underdogs for the first time this season. You could wager on Joe Burrow winning MVP. You could wager on the Bengals winning the AFC North. You could go way down the line and say, hey, the Bengals are going to win the AFC despite their 2-2 two and two start and Chris Sims ripping the offense, and maybe you're that bullish on them. If so, all you have to do, mybookie.ag. And it's not just the Bengals, of course. You can wager on Thursday night's matchups. You can wager on Sundays, Monday nights, NBA with NBA right around the corner, Major League Baseball with the playoffs here. You can wager on all of that and so much more with my bookie. Again, use promo code Bengals Talk. And look, it's a huge game. Criticism is going to come anytime you have an offense that has the firepower the Bengals have, and it's struggling. And I don't think it's going to bother anyone in the Bengals locker room that, that that's the case. Right, that there is some, uh, you know, Chris Sims's comments. I, it'll reach some of them, but I, I will say this: you're going up against the Ravens team that has gotten gashed and slashed in the passing game. All right, then. So you should be able to go there with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd and Hayden Hurst and put up big numbers in the passing game. It's going to be interesting to see. If they can get that done, we'll have our prediction. Make sure you check out the OT with Elise Jesse on Thursday night. She's going to be joined by Tim McGee. I think she's going to have some thoughts on what Chris Sims said as well. So buckle up, Bengals fans, and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for ringing the bell. For Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, I'm James Rapine signing off for now on CBT, Cincinnati Bengals Talk.